Lab. This week, we're talking about trust, while we look at the story of a man who had a lot to worry about. Oh, and we're also going to be doing this. Hey, I'm Skylar, and this is Sebastian. And we're talking about trust, which is putting your confidence in someone you can depend on. Sebastian has an experiment planned for us today that I'm trusting will be incredible. Yeah, about that. You said you have something really cool. I did. I, I do. So... I didn't actually test it out yet. You don't think it's gonna work? I'm just a little worried. Well, what is it? This. We're gonna have a snack? No, we're gonna balance these forks together at once. On the end of this toothpick, on the rim of that glass. Seriously? See, I knew it. No, no, no. We should try it. You'll think it'll work? I don't know. But just because you're worried doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Well then, let's make it. Step one, interlock the tines of the fork. All right, what if we, um... <sighs> Did it. That wasn't so bad. Step two, stick the toothpick through the middle of the fork. Oh, uh, and? Yes. <laughs> so far, so good. Step three, balance the forks on the rim of the glass. And? <gasps> See, you did it! Super cool. You didn't have anything to worry about. That's not what I was worried about. What are you worried about? Step four. Step four? Do not try step four without a grown up. You'll do. Thanks. Step four, we light the end of the toothpick on fire. Hold on, what's supposed to happen now? We light the toothpick on fire, it burns down to the rim, the fork stays balanced. That's not possible. There would only be a tiny piece of toothpick still on the glass. See, now you're worried. Maybe a tiny bit. Are we doing this? You are doing this. Countdown, please. Three, two, one. Fire in the hole. What? How is this happening? Hold on. So turns out the center of gravity where both forks balance is actually below the pivot point where the toothpick balances on the cup, which is why it stayed up balanced when the toothpicks were burned up. Incredible. I was right to trust you. Never had a doubt. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. The incredible world God made was broken. But God had a plan to bless the whole world through one family, 
God chose Abraham, who had a son named Isaac, who had twin sons named Esau and Jacob. Jacob tricked his big brother out of his rights and blessing as the oldest. And Esau was so angry that Jacob ran away for more than 20 years, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Let's talk about Jacob and Esau. Things had been bad between these brothers their entire lives. So bad that Jacob stayed away for 20 whole years. Jacob had been living with his uncle Laban and he had a big family of his own with lots of kids. But then God spoke to him. Go back to your father's land and to your relatives. I will be with you. Now, if you were Jacob, you'd probably be feeling all kinds of things. First of all, you might be kind of excited about getting to go home after so long. But at the same time, when you last saw your brother Esau, he was so angry, he wanted to kill you. Is he still mad? Or is he cooled down? Maybe you can actually hang out and be friends, or not. Jacob set out with his whole family. And when he got close to home, he decided to play it safe. So he sent a message to Esau. I don't want my brother to think I'm coming home to beg for help or anything. So tell him I've been staying with Laban and become wealthy. Now I hope I can please you. The messenger left and returned. We took your message to Esau and now he's coming to meet you with 400 men. Say what? 400 men does not sound like a welcoming party. 400 men sounds like an army. Jacob was worried. Jacob separated his family and his herds into two groups, figuring if Esau attacked one group, the other group could escape. But then he did something a little more helpful. He remembered to talk to God. Lord, you have been very kind and faithful to me, please. Save me from the hand of my brother Esau. I'm afraid he'll come and attack me and my family, but you have said, I will surely give you success. I, I will make your children as many as the grains of sand on the seashore. Jacob held on to God's promises, and then he decided to show his good intentions by sending a little gift to Esau. Well, not so little. I need 220 goats, 220 sheep, 30 camels, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 30 donkeys. Uh, now, you go ahead of me, and when you meet Esau, he'll ask, what's up with all these animals? And you say, they belong to your servant, Jacob. They are a gift to you. Jacob is coming behind. On it. Me too. Ditto. The whole time, Jacob was thinking, all these gifts will give Esau time to cool down, and then... Maybe, when he finally sees me, he'll welcome me. Jacob even sent his whole family ahead, across the river, figuring that Esau would not hurt them. Then, Jacob spent the night alone, wrestling with God, literally. But that's another story. In the morning, Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming, with 400 men. After all he'd done, Jacob was still worried. But this time, he didn't hide behind his family or gifts. He went on ahead. And as Jacob neared Esau, he bowed down to the ground seven times. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. The brothers finally meet. Jacob and his whole family are all tensed up because this could turn into all out war at any second. But instead, Esau ran to Jacob. He hugged him and kissed him and both brothers wept for joy. After all that time, their family was reunited. Esau asked, Who are all these people with you? They are the children God has so kindly given me. Why did you send all those herds I saw? I hoped I could do something to please you. I already have plenty, brother. Keep them. No, please accept this gift. Seeing your face is like seeing the face of God. Then Esau went back to his home and Jacob camped with his family in Canaan. The end. Wow. Jacob was so worried, but what he was afraid of didn't happen. Kind of sounds a lot like me today. 
I mean, I spend time stressing about something and then it turns out okay. It's super easy to do that, but you can trust God with the little stuff and the big stuff too. Jesus did that. I mean, even when he knew he was going to be arrested, he talked to God about it. And then he trusted God to be with him through everything. That's right. You know, talking with God is a big part of trusting God. So what's our part in this story? Well, maybe you're really worried about a big test. You can ask God to help you study and give you a clear mind. And then trust that you'll be okay, no matter how the test goes. Or your parents are going on a big trip and you'll be staying with your grandma for a whole week. You can ask God to give you peace and trust that God will be with you the whole time. I was so worried all week figuring out a cool experiment to do. I kind of forgot to talk to God about it. I guess that really would have helped. <laughs> For sure. I'll see you next time. Here's the thing. You can trust God even when you're worried. See how your experiment turned out? Brilliant. Next upon this toothpick, I shall balance myself. Hold this. You're actually doing this. Okay, thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time. <laughs>